this new facility is going to be called or is called Aurora Sun. What is that going to do in terms of helping you with the cost of production, bringing that down? And where will a lot of that production go? Yeah, the Aurora Sun project is, is quite something. It's 1.2 million square feet, of mainly production space with some post processing. Um, it's going to grow about 150,000 kilograms per year. Uh, we expect to have it um, growing by this time next year, maybe even having a crop off next year. But it was really uh, uh, a upgraded version of our Aurora Sky project at the Edmonton International Airport. The Aurora Sun project in Madison Hat, we, we chose that city because of its tremendous amount of sunshine. And it is a, a hybrid facility that um, is, is unparalleled in the world. Yeah, it's in uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta. Um, in terms of uh, production, uh, one analyst, Noah Cowan, um, today, which actually upgraded your stock to a speculative buy from a hold rating, said that it's going to be a total cash cost of less than a dollar a gram. Where is it now so, so we can understand how this brings down those costs? I think the industry average is um, from close to three to the lowest I've seen is about a buck fifty. So it positions us well on the go forward in this industry that you're seeing critical mass in. You're seeing um, you know, the larger companies, uh, uh, you know, buy the smaller ones, and and I, I see to go forward as you have to be a low cost producer, uh, and you better make sure you grow high quality cannabis. Hey, hey, Terry, it's Tim Seymour, and I think that's the next phase of that question is because it means that pr you know, production costs may go down, so may costs for the underlying product. You guys are a global player, and I just kind of want to get a sense of there's four or five guys that are leading the way. How difficult will it be for other people to follow you? Is critical mass critical right now? It, it truly is. The, the barriers to entry in Germany, Italy, Poland, Denmark are the EU GMP. Um, that's a uh, European Union GMP compliant is good manufacturing processes. Those barriers to entry were higher than Canada's. We had to upgrade our facility near Calgary just to um, export to Germany. But the beauty of what's going on in Europe, you've got you know close to 500 million people. You've got a medical cannabis system that's going one country at a time, so we're able to keep up with it. It's a good thing it doesn't go like that, or it would be a, a lot of work to do. It, is that they also cover the cost of cannabis. And the amount of uh, cash we get per gram is much higher in Europe um, as, as we continue to export. Uh, production in Europe, there's very, very little. Um, they're going to have production, but it, it's five years out from being able to supply a decent medical market, for sure. All right. Uh, Terry, we hope you come back to FAST. It's been fascinating talking with you. Terry Booth, the CEO of Aurora, for joining us from Canada. Um, are you invested in this one? I, I'm you invested are? in this one. Mm -hmm. I, you know, first of all, congratulations to our friends in Canada who have made this a global industry that the rest of the world is trying to emulate. And the Canadians are helping to do that in Germany and Europe and Uruguay. So I mean, it's a very real business. Um, it, it, make no mistake that the politics around cannabis in this country are changing. And I think it's going to be a very hot issue going into the midterm elections. And I think it's something that the White House is actually going to get behind. Um, but the valuations back to these stocks are not cheap. And there's a reason why they're not cheap, because I think a lot of these guys have to invest in their future production, which is what these guys are Particularly doing. Particularly in international markets. I was surprised at how much of a growth market Europe was going to be. I mean, they just made Aurora, just made an acquisition in Germany to help it there. And they are also applying for um, a production license in Germany as well to grow there. So things could be changing. We're, we think of cannabis and we think of the industry in North America primarily, because we're here. But there's one globally as well. 100%. I'm glad we're not playing the bong music, because it's a, big, it's a real story. And this is a... Listen to there it is. Thanks, Guy. See, we actually were having a serious conversation. And GW we... Pharma has an FDA meeting yeah. tomorrow. When we go to the board over there with the, with the mid, what do we call that? Power pitch, Fast right? Pitch. And we talked, right, power pitch. And we talked about Fast GW pitch. Pharma, thank you, a while ago. <laughs> yep. And that stock's had a decent run. So listen, there are real stories in this space. And when you get by the bong water and everything, yeah. this is a very disruptive industry. By the way, the CEO of GW Pharma will be on Power Lunch tomorrow. Unbelievable. Our special Weed Week continues here on Fast uh, with top Wall Street analyst Vivian Azer tomorrow and Friday with former Massachusetts Governor William Weld, who is now on the board of a pot company.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.